All right, everyone, grab a family member, grab someone you love, and sit right down, because it's going to be a very, very important teaching on the rapture of the church. So many people, including myself, will use scripture when referring to the rapture of the church, and we will come out and tell you that, indeed, no man knows the day or the hour, or he's going to come for his bride, just like scripture tells us, like a thief in the night, could it be? that we are wrong? Could it be that we can know, that we will know the exact hour that he comes for the church? Stay with me. Let me begin by saying real quick that I have had a very difficult time, one take after another after another. The enemy, we know who he is, does not want this video out there. It happened with my video I did prior on uh, Obama and uh, sitting on the throne of Satan. It was a very difficult day for me to get videos done. And more confirmation, my wife is online earlier today, uh, an online Bible study, and she is typing scripture to present in the Bible study, and her computer locks up and it freezes up, and she rebuked Satan in the name of Jesus, and she took a picture of the scripture, and she just told me, you know, the enemy knew he was defeated and the computer started to work. So in the mighty, most powerful name of Jesus, I rebuke you. I rebuke you, the enemy. I rebuke all unclean spirits from preventing this important message from getting out. In Jesus' name. Now, before I bring you this, uh, on the rapture of the church and can we, will we know the exact hour? But Yeshua comes for his bride. I did a video. Tomorrow's the 7th. Tomorrow's October 7th. Now, I did a video last year where I'm asking the question, October 7th for the rapture of the church? Is there a connection with October 7th? And then just a few weeks ago, I did another video this year talking about uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. And I asked a question, could this be? the rapture of the church. At no point did I say this is the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church is going to take place on October 7th. But we've got so many, uh, I'll call them Christians out there, maybe lukewarm Christians that like to get on here and like to mock and like to put words in my mouth. Let me make this clear. I did not last year in the video where I'm asking is there a connection with um, October 7th and the rapture of the church. Nor did I in my most recent video say the rapture of the church is going to happen on um, Tabernacles on the last day on the 7th. I didn't say it's going to happen for certainty. I asked, a, I asked a question. I asked a question. Is it a possibility? It's a big difference in me coming on here setting a date. So I wanted to clear that air. So all you scoffers, all you trolls, all you lukewarm Christians, you mockers, Get your story straight because you're making yourself look ridiculous. Because anyone that watches the video know, they know that I did not say the rapture would take place tomorrow. Um, that's what Harold Camping did. And I am not a Harold Camping. I'm not setting a date. I never have. I never will. I've always said I don't have the gift of prophecy. Um, and I never set a date for October 7th. So, you know, you really make yourself look bad. You make all your brothers and sisters in Christ look back when you come on and you mock uh, a pastor or a minister. That is just asking a question, showing you a possibility. Could there be a connection? Because we're told to watch. I didn't say the rapture would take place on October 7th. No. Like I said, so many of us will reference scripture. Uh, no man knows the day or the hour for the rapture of the church. We all do that. We've all done that. I've done that. Or we will say he will come for his bride like a thief in the night. Could it possibly be that we will know a time? We will know the hour that he comes. Now, I have prayed on this for all day. And since I got this email yesterday, it's from Doug. Uh, Doug Ames, if you follow my channel... If you follow our live service over at Tiny Chat, you'll know who Doug is. Now, I'm going to begin 
with an email that he sent me that is confirmation. Because I've been looking at even, and I've mentioned this over at our live service at Tiny Chat, uh, how we're looking at Rosh Hashanah, we're looking at the Day of Atonement, another um, another big, big rapture watch time. Feast of Tabernacles, we're all watching now tomorrow. And could it be that these, along with Scripture, that says no man knows the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, could these be not referring to the rapture? He's going to come like a thief in the night, have nothing to do with the rapture, as the fall feast uh, days, Rosh Hashanah, Atonement, Tabernacle. Could they all be referencing his second coming? And could we know? Could we know and will we know the exact hour that the bridegroom comes for his bride? I believe we can. Let me share this email with you from uh, Pastor Doug Ames, and I am in total, total agreement with him on this. All right, are you ready? The email starts. I challenge where in the Bible does it say that no man know the day and hour of the rapture of the church, the coming for his bride. In fact, he tells us, we will not only know the season, but he tells us in Matthew 25 that he will come in the midnight hour. Again, I have prayed on this, and I am totally, totally in agreement with Pastor Doug. So where does it say we will not know the day or the hour? Let's take a look. Is it here in Matthew 25, speaking to the five foolish virgins? Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. No. He is warning them not of the time for the rapture. He's warning them of the end. Now this is tied directly to the thief in the night. What he does say is this. He comes at midnight. He comes at the midnight hour. Now for those of you that uh, are unfamiliar with uh, Pastor Doug Ames, he has spent numerous hours upon hours upon hours in Scripture, in the Word, going over research upon research upon research for decades. For decades. He knows Scripture. And he knows it well. And he knows Yahweh. And he takes this to Yahweh. Let me continue. Just want to make it clear so you know who I'm referring to when I'm referring to Doug. And yes, he is. Believe me, he is a theologian. He is a Bible scholar. Now, what does he say? Um, he comes at midnight. Now, Matthew 25. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Now we have a time, midnight. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Who are the five foolish virgins? Read the direct tie-in to the church of Sardis. It is the dead church. I mean spiritually dead. Now, is it over here in Matthew 24? Speaking of the end of the world, also tied directly to the thief in the night, Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. He's talking about the very end, when heaven and earth shall pass away. And I've referenced this scripture myself, speaking about um, the law, keeping the law, keeping the Sabbath, keeping the Ten Commandments, that not one jot nor tittle of the law will, will be done away with until heaven and earth pass away. But what is Jesus telling us here? When he's speaking of the end of the world, he also tied directly to Scripture, the thief in the night. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. He's not speaking here 
of the rapture of the church. Or could it be over here in Mark chapter 13, verse 32? Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, no, no. Both of these verses are connected directly to the second coming, not the rapture of the church, the end of all things, the thief in the night. Re scripture is referring to the second coming when Jesus returns, when Yeshua returns. What about over here in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The earth shall be burned up. Referring to when he comes as a thief in the night. Yes, yes, yes. He comes as a thief as we read before. It is the time the heavens shall pass away. And the earth. This is the day and hour that no one knows. Not the rapture of the church. It's the very end. What about, let's look over here. In Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. At least he walk naked. And they see his shame. Yes, yes, yes. The next two verses of Revelation 16. It is done. That's it, folks. This is the day and hour that no man knows. I'm not talking about the rapture of the church here. Revelation 16, 16. And he gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. <clears throat> It's very important. I know it's a little long, this teaching, but it's very important. And share this with someone that you love. It's so important. Now, let me finish. Now, think uh, this over, everyone, very, very carefully. Is it possible that the dead in Christ who rise, are they directly tied to knowing the day and the hour that Yeshua returns for his bride? Get ready. Get ready. You may be shocked to learn. Okay. What has been will be again. Where have we read that? What has been will be again. The dead rise. The Old Testament saints rise and walk the earth. Matthew 27 uh, verse 51, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. What if... Bear with me now. <coughs> Excuse me. What if the dead who rise first in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 is a direct copy of Matthew 27, 51? Chapter 4, verse 16, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Just as it did when Yeshua gave up his ghost and there was a great earthquake and the dead came out of their graves and walked the earth. The dead saints. There is nothing here that says how long, how many days, hours or weeks, just that they rise first. doesn't say how long of a time frame. We get so used to hearing what the world says that we believe it. The world has convinced us that we, who are caught up in the air, that it's a few seconds later. It happens immediately. No, no, no. It does not say that. The Word does not say that. 
Now, what if? Millions of the dead walk the planet. Yes, my dear father, your dead brother, or a sister, or a child, or a loved one, they walk, and they came through our own walls into our living room and spread the truth of the gospel, even telling us when the five wise virgins will meet her bridegroom. They give us the time. Will it be three days later? Ten days later? Thirty or forty days later? We will be told by the dead in Christ. Will we? Will we be told by the dead in Christ? Folks, I believe this is quite possible. It may very well be a repeat of history. What do you think the dead at the time of Yeshua's resurrection were doing when the graves opened? They weren't just moping around. They were telling everyone the good news. Okay, here it is, the big one. Matthew 25, the ten virgins. How is it that the five foolish virgins knew to wait at the door? Perhaps, just perhaps, they also learned from when the dead in Christ rose. So both the five bride virgins and the five hopeful but foolish virgins quickly rise to the occasion because the dead in Christ had already risen and told them of the exact hour, the exact time. Now, after all, their dead father and mother or brother or sister rose from the dead and told them the good news of when the bridegroom is coming. But here is their problem. The five foolish brides, they were not waiting patiently. <coughs> Excuse me. They are not the Church of Philadelphia. They are not the Philadelphia Church. They belong to one of the other six churches, probably the main church uh, in Sardis. After all, Yeshua makes a direct reference to them in the parable of the ten virgins. They were not watching. They were living with idols. They lost their love. They lost their first love. They have not the gift of the Holy Spirit because they were not born again. They continue to sin. They, live the, they love the world. They have knowledge of the Bible and Scripture, but they don't live it. But wait, all is not lost to them. Yeshua also tells them of another appointed time, or perhaps even several. Be that also unto death. Matthew 25, verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour, wherein the Son of Man cometh. Why do you think he was telling them to watch? Is it possible he is telling them to make the second watch, the third watch, or even the fourth watch? Think about this. If this was not a mystery to be revealed in the last days, people in general, over all these generations, would never watch. They would sin up until the first bus came, even the second or third, knowing they could always take another bus and be saved by His grace. They would never be watchful. They would be once saved, always saved. Got Yeshua, or do you have Satan? Now, Satan will take a person that is not born again and drag that person into tribulation and wrath. It will be the most insane time of anyone's life ever in the history of the world. If you are not saved, if you know someone that is not saved, share this with them. Demons, fallen angels appearing before a person in the physical form. These things, from the abyss, they will climb walls. They will have tails of scorpions, demons, teeth, like lions, fallen angels, and head of men. Get out of her! Yeshua and the bride says, get out of her. Don't be a foolish bride waiting for the last minute. You will not be going up in the clouds. You are thrown into tribulation. Yes, not all Christians are going to go. Don't be a foolish bride. Very important, all that's going on YouTube and we're hearing it in the news about the zombie apocalypse. What's Satan up to? <clears throat> Bear with me. We're almost finished here. Talking about the dead in Christ rising first. 
and the rapture of the church. Not happening, it doesn't say it's going to happen immediately. Back with the crucifixion of Yeshua, with the great earthquake, and uh, the dead saints coming out of their graves and walking the earth. What are we seeing today? What is Satan using? What illusion is he, is he knows what's going to happen? He knows the dead in Christ are going to rise first. So what, how is he using this? Zombies! What is Satan up to? Will the dead in Christ, before we rise, before we who are caught up in the air, rise and walk the earth before we depart? It happened before. The dead rise from the dust of the earth. Matthew 27, 51. Which there was a huge earthquake. Many of the dead rose and were seen. Lazarus raised from the dead. Yeshua was raised and resurrected from the dead. Now back then, the earthquake was large, huge. Many dead rose, uh, rising as a sign of a big earthquake. Yet compared to today, it will have been uh, minute. Perhaps only a few uh, thousand rose back then. Today, whoa, if millions arose from around the globe, not just Jerusalem, but around the world, think about how large this quake is going to be. A global global catastrophe brothers and sisters this is exactly what I believe Satan is waiting for he is preparing for the restrainer to be removed everywhere you look there's a zombie apocalypse the Center for Disease Control there is a Miami face eater we're seeing it he's preparing for the time that the restrainer restrainer is removed he is going to have to explain away zombies weather Earthquakes, pestilence, disease, the rapture, the dead in Christ walking around the earth. The, this list is long. <coughs> Excuse me, it goes on and on and on. A spider web of deceit. The greatest deception of all time. One dead of Yeshua, Yahweh, in Thessalonians. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Is there a repeat of Matthew 27 in the end days? Will Satan try like he always has and create his own dead and Satan will rise first? Does Satan know the dead in Christ will rise in these end days? Think about it. Technology. Nanobots. Uh, reanimate the dead. Could it be there is something more to this? Could it be that some type of nanobot is being produced. Chemtrails. Men will seek death but cannot find it. How do you kill a zombie? Cut off its head? Satan just may be setting something up in these end days to emulate the tribulation. Two. Dead of Yeshua. Yahweh. Ezekiel. Now this is interesting. Ezekiel 37. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeded great, an exceeding rather great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, 
Thus saith the Lord your God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Number three, the dead of Yahweh, Yeshua, in Isaiah, Isaiah 26, Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. Shall they arise, awake, and sing, Ye that dwell in the dust? For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into the chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. For their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Now in Psalms seventy eight forty nine he casts upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation. Revelation fourteen ten The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out. Dead of Yeshua of Yahweh. Matthew twenty seven verse fifty one. And behold the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of their graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with them watching Jesus saw the earthquake, and those things that were done. They feared greatly, saying, Truly, truly, this was the Son of God. Thank you everyone for listening. Is it possible that we so much talk about zombies? We're using scripture to refer to the rapture of the church as no man knows the day or the hour. It's going to come as a thief in the night. Could we be using scripture that is for the second coming will we know will we know the exact time that midnight hour will the dead who rise first in Christ will a great mega quake like the world has never seen take place enough to open graves of the saints around the world far more greater of an earthquake that happened at the, at the time of the crucifixion of Yeshua when thousands of graves graves opened and the saints walked the earth they didn't just walk around like zombies mumbling they were spreading they were talking they were telling of the good news of the rapture of the church will we be forewarned when this mega quake happens when the sky turns black and the ground quakes a mega quake felt around the world when millions of graves open will this be the time we are told of the rapture of the church. Don't be a foolish virgin. We, it's possible. We will know the exact time. Thank you for watching. Leave me comments.